Hey what's up guys, Captain Error here and welcome to my top 5 Battlefield 4 maps. Okay so number 5 is Lumfini Garden. Lumfini Garden is my favourite map from the Dragon's Teeth DLC and also one of my favourite maps in the game, hence why well, it's on the list. Vehicle Warfare though is practically non-existent so it's all close quarters combat which, you know, is actually not a bad thing. What I really like about this map though is the Tram Bridge as it offers some really awesome gameplay and also it's pretty much where everyone gravitates towards, so you're gonna get some pretty crazy gunfights. Another feature I really like is the so-called Levolution, remember that term, on this map. And this is present by destroying a giant water tower on top of a hill and it basically crashing down and killing everything around. Also it creates a whole load of dirt and mud and god knows what else and really changes up the map, which is kind of cool because you get all these cool new dunes you can kind of run around and get really close to the enemy. Now, while it is a cool feature, pretty much at the beginning of every round someone destroys the water tower, so I've not actually to this date ever seen what the map looks like before someone blows up the water tower. So number 4 is Paracel Storm. What a brilliant map. Now this is one of the base maps the Battlefield 4 originally came with and I have sunk a huge amount of time into this map. It's just great. Now, as most of you probably know if you've played Battlefield 4, Paracel Storm is basically an air and sea centric map. Now, there is ground combat and there's also a few anti-air tanks hanging around which you could use as armor, but it's more or less based around air and sea. Now, sea being kind of Battlefield 4's kind of new thing, um, they had a real big push for sea combat and this is no different this map. What's really cool though is the, again, levolution in this map. It basically is awesome, like, there's no other way to, to describe it. You can literally direct a battleship into an island and it blows up buildings. It, it, it's Well, it blows up a building, it's, it's really cool. And also there's a cool storm and all that which is hence the name Paracel Storm. But no, it's a really cool map and I think that anyone who hasn't played it has not played Battlefield 4. That's why it makes it onto this list. And so the number 3 spot goes to Siege of Shanghai. Siege of Shanghai, much like Paracel Storm, was one of the base maps for Battlefield 4 and another map that I have sunk a ungodly amount of time into. I would argue Siege of Shanghai doesn't necessarily have any particular concentrated type of combat. There's air, sea, armor, light armor, infantry, pretty much everything is in this map, which is why it's so good, because you can basically do whatever you want. And not to mention there's a giant building in the middle that if you shoot out the four supports it goes crashing down and well creates basically a temporary dust storm which is really really awesome and it's also part of their whole levolution thing again. I think I'm going to be using that word a lot in this this, this video. Yeah. But that, that's besides the point. What I find great about this map is fighting your way up to sea which is the giant building, you know getting yourself in one of the elevators, getting to the top, winning the objective and then getting it shot and the building starting to fall down and you parachuting out to safety. It, it It's really fun. Or also getting a chopper extraction which me and my friends have tried a few times. It usually doesn't go too well because the weird hitboxes on Levolution set pieces are very strange but uh, when it does work it, you look like a badass. So Giants of Corellia is gonna make it in at number two and uh, probably a lot of you are wondering why the hell are you including a final stand map near the top because well, Final Stand, while it was, you know, received quite well, it wasn't received as well as, I think, Dragon's Teeth, as far as I can see from reviews. But, forget that. I really like this map. It's my favourite from the Final Stand DLC, and I actually really like the Final Stand DLC, because the maps are just really cool. Now, I'm not a huge fan of snow environments, so that's why this map, particularly, I really like. I love the experimental weapons that they brought in for uh, Final Stand with the railgun and the drop pods and the weird little drone minigun thing which is really cool. Now of course they're kind of hard to come across because everyone kind of tries to get them but if you can get the railgun you can keep it you can do some serious damage. That thing can take down jets and helicopters like no tomorrow. Now while this map doesn't seem to have any massive levolution going on I just really like it. It feels like a proper hardcore battlefield map. It has everything you want. Much like Siege of Shanghai, it has your armor, your air, your light air, your light armor, your infantry. It's got everything and it's just a good map. It's got a bit of indoors combat as well in the little kind of camouflage dome. It's also got a lot of outdoor stuff. I really like the kind of central river running through and the bridge, which becomes like a hot zone for lots of gunfire. But I really like this map. It's just a really cool map and that's why I think 
it, it, it was in the running for number one. But I think I have something very special for number one, so that's why Giants of Karelia gets the number two spot. And my number one spot has to go to Operation Metro, the Battlefield 3 classic. How couldn't it? This map was so much fun in Battlefield 3 and I was really excited that they brought back the Battlefield 4 and they even put a few changes in. Now, most of them aren't even noticeable and you won't come across them much, such as the evolution of being able to destroy these poles holding up a load of rubble from, arguably you could say, the last battle from Battlefield 3. The other real noticeable difference is the facelift the map got. It does have a lot of graphical improvements, there's a lot more stuff in the map, which I suppose is just because the new consoles and PC, well, I suppose PCs are always able to handle it, but the new consoles can handle it, unlike last generation. Bar that though, it's the same map, the, the same choke points at B and C, the same craziness that you get on the elevators where literally it's just two teams shooting everything they've got at each other until one either breaks or enough of the other team dies so you can push through. It really is just a classic Battlefield map that's been kind of revamped slightly to bring it up to specs for the next uh, game, which I'm completely okay with because I love that map in the first place and I am now playing it constantly in Battlefield 4. It is one of my favourite maps of all time in any Battlefield game, and that's why I honestly believe that Operation Metro 2014 deserves a number one spot in this top 5 list. So there we have it, my top 5 Battlefield 4 maps. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, why not leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe? And why not down in the comments tell me what your top 5 favourite Battlefield 4 maps are, and why you enjoyed them so much. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.